Welcome back to MMA Al Dente. I am the guy who shit his pants at homecoming in 10th grade and had to walk home to change his clothing. I'm here to talk about David Dvorak versus Manel Kopp. David Dvorak is 20-4 and four overall, 3-1 uh, and one in the UFC. Manel Kopp is 17-6 and 3-1 and and in the UFC. Uh, I'm sorry, 2-2 two two in the UFC. Freudian slip there. He had a razor-thin fight with uh, Mateusz Nikolaou. When I say razor-thin, I mean it's widely regarded as a robbery. Uh, that's a fight he lost. But uh, anyway, let's get into it. Dvorak, again, he's 3-1 in the UFC. Got one finish, a rear naked choke over Juan Samil Ronderos. I don't know if I said his name correctly, but it was a nice, smooth first-round submission. Didn't even take him down. Just hit like a duck under against the cage and took his back. And then he's got two victories via decision over jo Jordan Espinosa and Bruno Silva. Uh, Dvorak is a ground fighter, even though he hasn't shown, uh, shown it in the UFC, his ground game. And that's because he's pretty good standing up, too. He's a very patient counter-striker. I think he's pretty powerful. He's uh, definitely not going to win the power battle here against Manel Kopp, but he's a pretty powerful guy, and he's a disciplined striker. But overall, I think he is hittable. I mean, he's obviously hittable. Who isn't? But he's hurtable. He's been hurt by uh, Bruno Silva. Bruno Silva had him on roller skates in round one. And that was with a big punch and a front kick. And he's been hurt by Mateusz Nikolaou, who knocked him silly at the end of round two. Knocked him on his ass with a wild combination, wide hooks. And uh, I just think David Dvorak is... I mean, he's definitely hurtable, never been finished, aside from one, you know, a cut, which doesn't count. Uh, so he's never been finished officially. But for a guy that I do think is hurtable and susceptible to getting rocked, fighting Manel Kopp spells danger, uh, in my opinion. Manel Kopp is, he's not the best striker in the division, but he's probably the most powerful. I'm having a hard time thinking of a guy that's more dangerous than he is. He's certainly up there. I'm sure he's in anybody's top three, if they gave it thought. So uh, I haven't, and I'm going to say he's the most dangerous guy. He's fucking awesome. Uh, we've seen him. He can be outstruck. We've seen it inside the UFC and outside the UFC. And outside the UFC, all of his losses come to really, really good competition. The elite of Japan, which is, you know, as you know, a really tough uh, market over there, too, uh, over in Ryzen. Uh, he lost to Kai Asakura, Hokyoji Horiguchi, Oka Sasaki. These are top-notch fighters, but over here, we've seen him arguably beat Mateusz Nikolaou, and then we've seen him knock out Oday Osborne and knock out Jalgis Jumogulov, who I really wish that decision went his way and he didn't retire, but that's an underrated guy, and uh, and in particular, a very tough guy, but Manel kopp has got that ne next-level power, and uh, yeah, the proof is in the pudding. Again, 17-6. and six, He's got 11 KOs, 5 submissions, and 1 decision. I do think he's got an underrated ground game, even though that's where he's most beatable. But uh, he, I expect him to win here because I trust him to win a point battle against Dvorak. I do think, you know, just based on the way he handled the Nikolaou fight, I feel like Dvorak is a, you know, when he's striking anyway, he's a lesser version of Nikolaou. On the ground... I do think Manel Kopp would run into trouble if Dvorak was able to take him down and hold him down, but I don't think he's going to be able to. Of course, if he is, you know, then uh, Dvorak uh, works really well on top. You know, he's got 16 finishes, 8-8, eight and eight, but a good amount of those TKOs are uh, on the ground, and all the submissions are as well. He's a really good ground fighter, got great passing and a strong mount. I think he could give a lot of trouble to anybody if he's on top, but I don't see him getting on top of Manel Kopp. Manel Kopp's a very skilled technical fighter. He's a smart fighter, and he's an athletic fighter as well. So it's a tough package. And uh, again, Dvorak is hurtable, and Manel Kopp is a guy there. You know, if, if he's got you hurt, he's going to put you away. So I'm taking Manel Kopp. I've got him via knockout round two. Wouldn't surprise me if he won a decision, because I'd expect him to win the point battle. Maybe not the, you know win the stat battle, but I expect his power to be visible and, uh, you know, persuadable or whatever, uh, you know, and I think uh, he's going to be, well, wouldn't be persuadable, but persuasive, I should say. I expect it to be persuasive, and I do think he can 
uh, visibly win a decision just with his power striking. And again, he's a guy that doesn't fall into too many traps. We saw in the Nicolau fight, and I think that's the best Devorah can do. And yes, most people, they'd say Cop won it. But anyway, Cop is a minus 260 favorite. I don't think that's, you know, that uh, juicy. I don't think it's worth really betting on that. I sprinkled something on the under, plus 115, under two and a half rounds, because again, I do think a finish is more likely than a decision for Cop. And if it goes the other way, Dvorak has a strong top game, but still, uh, he would have to really work Cop over and, uh, you know, tax his cardio quickly to get a finish inside two and a half rounds, because Cop is no slouch. But uh, I think that it's really a bet on Cop. Also, I've got a bet on rounds one and two knockout, plus 350, plus 600. I think that's where he'll get it done. I think, do think it will be a case of power, not the fatigue or whatever, but it's going to be power that wins this fight, and that's typically something that shows itself earlier. So, Manel Kopp via KO is the pick. I've got, I guess if I was forced to give you a round, I'd say round one, but uh, my bets are rounds one and two, plus 350, plus 600. That's it for me. Like, share, subscribe, all that horse shit, and check out my other videos, and comment below. Let me know about all the little stupid jokes I make.